Hello everyone. Uh, today we talk about um, Sheehan syndrome, one of the most undiagnosed uh, conditions arising from uh, postpartum hemorrhage. We already know postpartum hemorrhage is quite common. 6% of deliveries end up with uh, postpartum hemorrhage. So it's quite um, interesting that we rarely diagnose uh, these conditions. We have um, 10% of deliveries in urban areas happening in people's homes, 30% of deliveries in rural areas happening in people's homes, um, but we rarely diagnose um, uh, Sheehan syndrome. So we talk about Sheehan syndrome today to help us um, pick up our diagnosis acumen and help out um, women out there. So even though we rarely diagnose um, uh, Sheehan syndrome, it's uh, known that it's the sixth uh, most common cause of hypopituitarism um, around the world. Uh, the World Health Organization estimates that um, 100,000 uh, women die every year as a result of complications of um, uh, Sheehan syndrome. And also that um, Sheehan syndrome occurs in one out of every 100,000 births uh, globally. Um, apart from that, it's associated with uh, uh, perinatal deaths um, because most of these uh, deliveries um, are happening at home and also that after a woman gets this condition, um, she's unable to breastfeed so her baby ends up um, uh, dying. Um, so. What is Sheehan syndrome? Uh, Sheehan syndrome is a condition in which there is um, hypopituitarism, um, which is of variable severity uh, as a result of uh, commonly postpartum hemorrhage. Uh, this condition is named after Harold Sheehan, who described this condition and characterized it. So apart from postpartum hemorrhage, there are other conditions that can cause um, Sheehan syndrome that includes autoimmune disorders destroying the anterior pituitary gland, a thrombosis of um, uh, the blood supply to the pituitary gland from any cause, and also disseminated intravascular coagulation. We know uh, disseminated intravascular coagulation can be uh, quite common in pregnancy. If these things happen together with the risk factors of having a small uh, cell atasica, um so much that if the pituitary gland increases in size as it does during pregnancy doubles in size um, that uh, worsens the uh, compression of the vessels uh, supplying uh, the pituitary gland of course home births also um, are predisposed to uh, to Sheehan's uh, syndrome so the hypertrophy of the pituitary gland in pregnancy uh, to almost double its normal size is a um, is a risk factor for uh, Sheehan syndrome. This is so because the blood supply needs uh, for the pituitary gland with the increase in size also increases, and also we know that the pituitary gland is sitting in a small space, um, the cella tasica. So. And it's all born. So when the size increases, there's compression of the pituitary gland from this bony uh, cell atasica, which compresses blood supply to the pituitary gland and uh, worsens the, the need uh, for blood, especially in those situations when we have uh, severe hypotension as a result of um, postpartum hemorrhage, the pituitary gland really gets affected. Um, this is worsened by the fact that uh, the anterior pituitary gland uh, specifically does not have its own blood supply. Its blood supply comes through a network of capillaries that are around uh, the hypothalamus. So the blood is already slowed down through these capillary um, uh, networks around the uh, hypothalamus before it gets to the to the pituitary gland. The posterior pituitary gland, on the other hand, is rarely affected by uh, Sheehan syndrome because it has its own blood supply. It has a, a post, uh, posterior hypophysial artery. It has um, 
like a superior hypophysial artery and and infadibular artery so it's a blood supply is um is good and therefore is not affected by these um rapid changes um in uh, blood pressure when there is um a postpartum hemorrhage uh, then the other issue is that um the posterior pituitary um of course is not really affected but the anterior pituitary has all these um cells uh, cell lines in it that uh, are producing all these hormones so there are somatotrophs producing um, growth hormone there are lactotrophs producing um, prolactin there are corticotrophs producing um, cortical uh, trophin releasing hormone there are thyrotrophs producing um, thyroid stimulating hormone and there are gonadotrophs producing follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone and in the pituitary gland, the, the um, cells that are in high concentration are the somatotrophs and the lactotrophs and um, the gonadotrophs as well. So these cell lines, uh, because of their high volume in the anterior pituitary, are much more affected by the reduction in uh, blood pressure. They are also much more affected because they are on the anterior aspect kind of away from from the blood supply so they get uh, more affected and this has implications on the uh, clinical presentation of uh, these patients so if um, not all cell lines are affected uh, this patient would have what is called the partial hypoputitarism and if there's complete destruction of all the cell lines then we have what is called a complete uh, hypopituitarism and uh, depending on the how the cells have been affected this condition can be acute in in these situations the symptoms of um uh, shian syndrome and signs uh, come in within two to ten days of the postpartum hemorrhage in the chronic form the condition can set in two years to up, up to 20 years uh, from the day of the of the insult so it can be chronic uh, onset or it can be acute uh, onset um, uh, Sheehan syndrome so the diagnosis of uh, Sheehan syndrome is uh, is really clinical patients who present after a postpartum hemorrhage to the hospital with uh, a complaint of not uh, producing um, uh, breast milk they cannot feed their baby then um, some weeks later they can present with uh, a lack of menses because there's no follicle stimulating hormone the reason they are presenting with an inability to breastfeed is because there's no um, the lactotrophs have been destroyed and there's no prolactin uh, being produced and therefore they will come with failure uh, to to breastfeed in the chronic uh, form they might come with um, um, uh, things like um, uh, the breasts that are sagging uh, abnormally after delivery wrinkles around the um, the eyes they might have um, uh, lack of growth of hair in the armpits and in the uh, pubic region all this because of the hormones that are impaired like growth hormone and so on some of them might come with um, menopausal symptoms after um, a delivery and postpartum hemorrhage so a um, thorough history is quite important in uh, uh, getting to to the diagnosis but the commonest symptoms of um, uh, Sheehan syndrome is a patient coming to the hospital with failure to breastfeed and also amenorrhea after a delivery and if you dig in the history you might find that they had, um, uh, they had a postpartum hemorrhage. Um, imaging wise it's um, usually having a CT scan done or a, an MRI which will show uh, the cell atasica having a very shrunken pituitary gland and or it's not actually there so this will help in the um, uh, diagnosis of the condition treatment we need to counsel the patient about the condition educate them about the condition we need to our aims are really to help improve the quality of life of the patient and we give 
hormone replacement depending on the complaints that the patient has come with if there's a adrenal corticotrophic hormone uh, deficiencies they might need some steroids um, they might need uh, follicle stimulating hormone if they want to become pregnant they might need um, thyroid uh, thyroid hormones if um, they need to if they have the thyroid uh, dysfunction so um, treatment is individualized uh, depending on the needs uh, of the particular uh, patient in front of us. So this um, was our presentation on Sheehan syndrome and how to identify it and how to treat uh, the basics on how to treat these patients when, when they present to us. Thank you so much for listening and we'll see you uh, next time.